Fishing is the number one dangerous job in the world. We face a lot of adversity out there as far as weather and accidents on the boat and everything to provide that seafood for the public. But uh, we love it, you gotta love that job. First thing I'm doing, I'm waiting for the buoy to come next to me so I can grab it. You have to make sure you, you know, you don't have no legal. I mean, you have to, both, both have to be legal. And that's that. And we do that about 180 times in a row. There is a lot going on here right now. I don't know where I belong. All right, here we go. Set up, ready to go. I, if, if this isn't a business that you do just because of the money, you do it because you love it. Yeah. We personally, as fishermen, fish for the people that can't go fishing. Good morning, and thanks for stopping by. It is currently 5 a.m. here in the fabulous Florida Keys. Roosters are crowing, cats are all over the place. And uh, behind me is a commercial lobster boat. And that is the experience that I'm gonna be sharing with you all today. I should also mention that the commercial lobster industry is absolutely fascinating, wild, and filled with some incredible statistics. For today, northeast to east winds 10 to 15 knots, seas 1 to 2 feet. For tonight, northeast to east winds 10 to 15 knots early, increasing to 15 to 20 knots, seas 1 to 3 feet, building to 2 to 4 feet. See those shrimp boats back there? I'm going to be uh, filming one of those as well. And now we will be motoring for about the next two hours as we make it out to our first lobster trap, which is about seven miles out to sea. And by daybreak, we will be at our very first lobster trap, one of 180 traps that we'll be pulling out of the ocean for the day. Just think about where your food comes from. You know, it's, it's, there's a lot of work that goes into it, even if you don't agree with the process or, or what's being done to harvest the food, but it's there and it's, it's there for everybody. And we work hard to provide it for people, you know, so they can enjoy it. The lake will be another beautiful day. We're fishing a renewable resource. It's not like oil, for instance, when you take it out of the ground, it's gone forever. Yeah. When you use oil. This is a renewable resource. Uh, my name is George Niles, captain and owner of the fishing vessel GND and past president of Florida Keys Commercial Fishermen's Association. So I've been involved in uh, the political side of it since 1979. If you have enough regulations in place to where before you harvest that species of fish, it reproduces and replenishes itself, you'll never run out of it. Yeah. So. We're basically fishing on a renewable resource. We're feeding the, the world on renewable resources. Yep. What more environmental friendly could you want than that? At the back of the boat, there is a puller, someone who cleans the traps and measures the catch, as well as a stacker. The captain stays in the wheelhouse during the entire trip, following the rows of traps that were set on previous trips. Typically, the traps would be pulled emptied and then rebaited, going back into the water, but towards the last few months of the season, traps come home to be repaired and stored for next season. First thing I'm doing, I'm waiting for the buoy to come next to me so I can grab it. Then I'm gonna grab it. Put it in the dab it here. As soon as my table gets set. Put it in the dab it here. Shifts. Clean the rope while it's coming up. This rope here, this is a rope cleaner. Gotta wait till the trap comes up. Once the trap gets to the surface, slow it down. There we go, that's one trap. And hopefully I do all that before I get the next movie kids here. From my own observation, this is the most dangerous part of the industry. I've heard horror stories of pullers losing control of their trap, turning it into a lethal weapon. There you go. There you go. Is a lethal Holy weapon. crap. Wow, like, I see a guy my, knees are, my knees are shaking. My knees are shaking. 
Wow. Great. Thanks, Cap. I had a trap before come up, flew up in the air, crab trap, flew up in the air, hit me in my shin, took my shit out, almost. Turned black and blue for about a month. This is dangerous. This, 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 you're not stopping hydraulics. Sam is the first to pull the trap and also the one who sets the pace for what's next. Clean in. You know, clean the, the ramps and, and the care of the fish, you know. I have to make sure all the fish is okay. That's it. While Hector is cleaning the traps, he must be mindful of the massive pressure coming through that hose, as that metal nozzle at the end can easily knock you out. Once he's finished cleaning, it is his responsibility to measure out the catch and toss any back that are too small. You have to make sure you, you know, you don't have no legals. I mean, you have to, all, all have to be legal. They're not gonna be. When it comes to things you catch unintentionally, also known as bycatch, you'll see the occasional conch or stone crab, but because of strict regulations, you won't see them much at all. There you go, Lindsay. I answered your question. All right, so now I'm going to do the pressure washing and do the uh, lobster sizing. small. Yeah. I don't want to mess with this too much because this is your catch. I get that. Yeah, yeah, okay. I get, I get this. I get this. Yours. Good this is that. Yep. Okay. All right. Now, oh my gosh. After some solid lobster wrangling, I got to measure the catch, feeling the pressure to make sure it was all done up to regulation and quick enough not to slow the crew down. Definitely, the, the, I think the price of fish is finally starting to catch up with our job. Yeah. Uh, we used to get, uh, I don't know, felt like we got $4.50 for lobster for 25 years. And now with the Chinese market opening up, um, that is basically doubled in the last 10 or 15 years. I feel like we're starting to get paid what they're worth more. The public is wanting fresh caught seafood and, and a lot of them are willing to pay for it. Everybody wants cheaper food, you know, of course, but the people are, are slowly becoming willing to pay more for a good product. get stacked 180 times. My role today is if Sammy will pull the trap, Hector will clean it, pick it, they'll roll it down to me, I get it here. I usually throw my knot in it now for the summertime. It saves me one step there. Make sure the rope is in there nice and neat and coiled so it doesn't tangle on the way out next year. And then uh, down the roller to the stack. And then uh, Sometimes these four highs get a little heavy. But that's what we do. And that's that. There is no exaggerating about these traps. They were super heavy. And to think all of this was done on a calm day. They just spent over three hours trapping and now it is time to clean up and head home. Nice and clean. You ain't gonna sit there hand clean them by hand no more. 
drag them by, drag them behind the boat for a half an hour or an hour, and they come out spotless again. Then we take them back to the dock. And this summer we'll paint them, paint you know, paint them up, get them ready to put them back on the traps. Uh, yeah, we started pulling traps at about uh, 6:30, about 6:37 a.m. And it is uh, about 1 p.m. right now. So that was a full day, pulling 180 traps. We were finally done. By the way, right there where you see there, that is where all the lobster live. And they keep them alive because that is what the Chinese like. They want them alive so that when they make it to the dock, they can take them and put them on a plane and ship to China alive. Now, let's get back to the dock. Break time's over, and after unloading 21,600 pounds worth of weather beam traps within 45 minutes, only sacrificing a little blood and a few bruises to the greater good of the industry, the lobsters are hauled over to the fish house with pride. The lobsters don't know this yet, but it's somewhat of a beauty contest they have entered into. And so what are you checking for? Uh, soft ones, weak ones. Uh, if they're missing more than three legs, they don't accept them. That's because spiny lobster is a high dollar item in China, and they don't cut any corners when it's presented at the dinner table. About 290 pounds, 16 pounds of reject. Just under 300 pounds were caught today, and 95% of them are headed to the other side of the world. Today was considered a good day, and within roughly 72 hours, restaurant goers in China will be able to enjoy the fruit of the crew's incredibly hard work. They received top dollar for their catch, getting between eight to $12 a pound, and happy to have someone to sell to today. But it's not always like that. The coronavirus pandemic has really created a lot of uncertainty for spiny lobster fishermen. Not only has the price of everything gone up, but selling to international buyers leaves them with no other option than to fish on a day-to-day -day basis, not always knowing what the next day will be like. They also had a few things to share about the future of this industry. We need young people in the industry. There. Well, yeah, we young do. people coming in this industry. They ain't That's no young people coming problem. in this industry. Very, very few younger and younger people coming in this industry. Yep. You know, we, we're, 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 I'm 49 years old and I'm an old timer already. You know, I mean, there's very few people coming in this industry younger than me. Very Before, few younger. used to be. Everybody in there, everybody's kid was coming in it. Just like I was, just like George, just like Sammy. You know, we were, we were born and raised in this industry. And it's just less and less of people coming. Pretty soon, there may not be anybody to do it. Yeah, no. It's a shame because it's a wonderful way of life, believe me. It's a dream. Living live the dream. dream every day. Living the dream every morning. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. So, what is the biggest threat that you and the rest of the industry faces? Land use. Uh, land next to the ocean is being gobbled up to uh, build hotels and, and by people that want to live next to the water. And we need uh, land to store all of our traps and gear next to the water. And what else is there? Yeah, you know what he bought? That. Thank you very much. Okay, well, we got to talk about the work. It was a great Hector, what is one piece of advice that you'd like to share with the world? Well, you know, my English is not so well. That's fine. He wants to know if you have any advice for anybody. Tell anybody what Tell, was, Words of wisdom. Words of, oh, for the people around the world? Yeah, yeah around the world. Words around of world? wisdom. Yeah. Get in peace. Take it easy because everybody has to get it in the end. Take it easy. <laughs> easy. <laughs> for All the right. world, easy. Take it easy, world. All right, George, you're next. Me next? Yeah. One piece of advice you'd like to share with the world. Don't fight. Everybody get along. I like that. <laughs> Here we go. You better, follow, you better follow us. Ah, yes, I can do that. That's right. <laughs> Captain George. Yep. Hector. Billy. Be. Nice to meet you, bro. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys, for the experience. <laughs> and to think all of that started with a simple hello. And now we get to learn something new today. Hope you enjoyed.
Thanks for watching.